Hey, welcome back. It's a Money Monday where we bring on the money guests and we're talking about a terrible issue right now, the impeachment of what I think one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. Um, but the impeachment continues. Nancy Pelosi took a vote over in the People's House. They came up with some articles of impeachment and now she's been holding them. She's not turning them over to the Senate to start the trial because she thought she has leverage, which she has none, to break it all down. Uh, nationally recognized uh, analyst and uh, attorney, Tisha Powell, joins us. She's been on the show many times, and she's also the author of the book, Trump Must Win, and that talks about what could happen to us if he doesn't win in 2020, right? That's correct, and, you know, it's funny because I even mentioned Iran in my book because I knew that probably Iran is going to challenge us because they know that um, the Democratic Party is trying to get Trump impeached so that the Democrats could win. And I don't think that Iran has any respect for Warren Biden or Sanders. And I think that they're afraid of President right, they Donald don't want, Trump. They clearly don't want Trump in these days after um, we took out their number one uh, military general and commander there. Uh, but let's take a look at what Nancy Pelosi had to say on impeachment. And I'd like to get your views on this. Sure. I did say as I would be consulting with my members uh, this week on Tuesday morning at our regular caucus meeting uh, that we would vote to send them over and we'll determine in our meeting when we send them over. But it is, we've never, I've always said I would send them over, so there's, there shouldn't be any mystery to that. What we did want, though, and we think we accomplished in the past few weeks, is that we wanted the public to see the, the need for Witnesses, witnesses with firsthand knowledge of what happened, documentation, which the president has prevented uh, from coming uh, to the Congress as we review this. So is it even up to her? She goes, well, there's no mystery in it, Tisha. There is some mystery in it. And I want to bring in Frank because he's got some views on okay. this stuff, too. Frankie's over there in the Frank zone. Um, but Tisha, does, is it even up to her? Doesn't she have an obligation to turn over the articles? It's done now for Nancy Pelosi, and actually the reason she's not turning it over is because she knows nothing is going to happen. I mean, Nancy Pelosi wants to be the judge, the juror, and the execution in President Donald Trump's impeachment trial. And it's not going to work, Mrs. Pelosi. There is a check and balance in place. Maybe you need to know the Constitution, but you have no power over what the Senate is going to do. And they're probably going to acquit Trump. So get used to it, Nancy Pelosi, because President Trump did not do any bribery, no treason. There was nothing, nothing, no crime. The whistleblower was all hearsay. It was even said that the attorney for the whistleblower was the one who even drafted this document. Now, how would you like voters if you were to go to court and you could not know who your witness is? And then the prosecutor is trying to go ahead and get a conviction and turn your judge and jury. This is what this is. It's very unfair process. And President Trump is going to be acquitted. And he should get acquitted. And Pelosi is looking dumb and stupid at the same time. Uh, Taisha, I am curious about the political and the legal strategy behind Nancy Pelosi's decision to delay sending the articles uh, to the U.S. Senate. I'm not really clear what she's gained at all by waiting a few weeks instead of just sending them right to the Senate as soon as the House impeached him. Uh, are, am I missing something here? Yeah, this is an election year, and Pelosi is trying to use this to go ahead and go after Donald Trump. This is what this really is. The Democratic Party is probably behind this, and Pelosi is trying to dumb down Trump points so that one of her favorite could win, Warren, Biden, or Sanders. Well, since you mentioned that, uh, Warren and Sanders both need to sit in judgment at the impeachment trial. Joe Biden does not because he's not in the U.S. Senate anymore. Do you think that perhaps part of the strategy on the part of Pelosi here w might be to tie Warren and Sanders up right before Iowa and New Hampshire so that Biden could have free reign to press the flesh in, to press the fr flesh in those places? That's exactly what it is, because what people don't understand about elections is that it's all about electability. And Biden is the strongest person on the Democratic side to go against President Trump. Uh -huh. And this is what this impeachment is about. President Trump did not commit any crime. We're beginning to see the Senate, Pelosi is falling apart. She can barely let go of the articles because she knows it's dead upon arrival. And she needs more time. She's trying to buy time to dumb down President Trump points. It's all 
it's all political. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going to backfire on the Democratic Party because what's going on, they are squeezing the voters. Small people like me and you cannot vote anymore because Pelosi is saying if we send an outsider, they're going to kick them out. And this is a problem in America. This is, I think, Pelosi is running America like a third world country now. She's, I mean, um, who, why would you abuse a standing pr a president in office aside from his political? And we're all seeing it and it's not looking good. I want to I wanna just ask you this. Tisha, um, yes. next time you come on, can you just tell us how you really feel? I mean, I don't want you to hold back. I feel like you might be holding back a, a little bit. I, no, I, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. I, know, that's I'm it. Back, don't but, go but, any, but you I went far you, enough. I got to tell you, I came from a third world country, and I feel this election is now a Where'd third world country. Where would you come from? I'm from Jamaica. This is what you do in third world country, Nancy Pelosi. You do not do this in the United States. This is the problem. This is why I know that America is going into a socialist agenda, because when you have Pelosi trying to impeach our president, She's trying to knock us out of the voters. We're not going to count. That's what they're trying to say. They know Trump is going to win, and they don't want us to count. This is a problem in America. This really is a problem, and they just have to stop it. I mean, I'm supposed to say all that stuff, but she said it so good that I'm not even going to follow up on that. Frankie made a great point in there also that this, you know, the last time Bernie Sanders was in the lead, and the whole apparatus of the Democratic National Campaign Committee was against Bernie. They were helping Hillary every way they could. And maybe somewhere deep inside here, this is Pelosi and the establishment trying to box out uh, Bernie and Warren by making them sit in a trial in the Senate and dragging on and dragging on. And it's a way to boost up Joe Biden. Um, I think they have a tremendous, tremendous enthusiasm problem on the Democrat side. I think uh, of the people who said Democrat primary voters who said they were going to vote for Joe Biden, only 49 percent of them said that they were enthusiastic about him. Only 66% said they were enthusiastic about Bernie Sanders. I mean, Frank, maybe, maybe they're trying to do this to get Biden's numbers up. Well, I, I, I don't know. Biden is still firmly in the lead nationally. The only place that Biden mm. is, uh, seems to be having some difficulty is in the first two uh, primary states of Iowa and New Hampshire. So uh, as I, uh, I asked uh, Ms. Powell, I wonder if this is part of the strategy to uh, keep these senators off the campaign trail so that Biden could have a clear path towards the Iowans that are about to caucus in 21 days. And yes, because I worked on a lot of campaigns before. I've worked on McCain. I've worked on Romney before. It's all about electability. So what's going <laughs> on? The Democratic Party, they're, all, they're always seen. Who could go against Trump? Mm. Biden is their best bet. They're going to do whatever they can to win, including using taxpayer money, as Nancy Pelosi do, to create this impeachment friction just to get Biden ahead. Tell and this should, is not fantastic. right. This let, is so unfair. Fantastic. Quickly, before we break, let me yes. take advantage of your legal and political sure. expertise. As you mentioned in your book, you uh, did write uh, about Iran before the rest of us were even talking about Iran. Um, Jim Webb, who's also an attorney, former uh, United States Senator and President Reagan's Secretary of the Navy, he wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post on Friday talking about the precedent that it might set to have one country assassinate a military leader of another country that we're not currently at war with. This is the first time the United States has done that. The only other time uh, that's analogous to it was the uh, 1943, it was in 1943 when we were at war with Japan. Are you concerned, now that the United States has done this, that this could potentially open up our leaders to f assassination from foreign countries that we're not at war with? No, America is still the strongest nation, and this is what Iran and everyone is afraid of. They're afraid of the Republican Party. They're afraid of President Trump. And why I wrote Iran in the book is because I know that everyone thinks that Biden, Warren, or Sanders might come out ahead. So, of course, Iran wants to test us now because they... Pre they assume, because President Trump has some legal problems here, that he's going to be sleeping. But they're wrong. President Trump is going like to be watching 24 It doesn't 24 seem South. like he was asleep. Well, they just assume it. They don't yeah. know. They just know they're reading from books that Trump is being impeached. They're just getting the news as well from the liberal media. Mostly, well, see, If you go overseas, mostly you watch CNN. I so you know what they're seeing over there, that Trump is being impeached. So they're like, yeah. I think Let's they, go for it. I think they got the memo now. <laughs> I um, think they have When we in, caught in, up with terror leader uh, Qasim Soleimani uh, and dropped a little tomahawk drone shot right on his head. And uh, Iran stepped back, fired some dusty old missiles at some empty bases, accidentally shot down a commercial airliner. 
So I think they displayed for everyone how little of a response they were going to have, and I think Donald Trump got them to stand at attention, as we all do when we're in the studio. And Tisha Powell joins us for her insightful commentary. We're going to take, thank you, Tisha. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. You're wonderful. Thanks. We're going to take a quick break. My brother, Derek, they're calling him now downtown Derek because he's roaming all around downtown. He's our man on the street talking to people, and he found one special guy that we usually put up a whole bunch of different little interviews with different people. One guy, right after this, don't go nowhere. <laughs> 